YouTube crew, what is going on and welcome back. Now the other day on stream we had this game right here, a 1.13 average KD lobby. We dropped 19 kills in the win. So today we're taking a look at why my enemies don't shoot back to me. How can I get kills without taking damage? As always, if you find this video helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and let's comment hashtag damage down below for the algorithm. If you are looking to continue getting better Warzone, make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell turned on so that you don't miss any videos. Let's get into it. So again, we're taking a look specifically at why my enemies don't shoot back here. So I grab this XM4 and I actually hear this person below me right here. So I catch a glimpse of him. Now we anticipate, right? I know where he's moving to. So I'm gonna anticipate and I pre-aim this door. I connect with all my shots. I get him down and thirsted before he can even get a shot on me. Now, Dizzle gets shot in the back. So I rotate down, I slide around the corner. And again, I hit all my shots here, taking minimal damage. If I miss bullets there, you know, I'm almost out of ammo by the time I down and thirst that guy. So if I miss bullets there, not only does he get more damage on me, but now I got to figure out how I'm going to get him down because I either have to chase him, I have to reposition, I have to do something. So instead, I hit my shots, I get him down, ultimately get him thirsted, and I take minimal damage. Now I replayed up, now we're good to go. So we're going to keep pushing through this building. This is the part of rebirth where people just keep landing back in. Unfortunately, floor loot, as you can see, I'm, I'm really struggling here with the floor loot. Uh, everybody is right now, so we just try to make best with what we have. In this case, the XM4, which is plenty viable. So I'm gonna push across. Notice I get both of those people down there because I can hit my shots. Unfortunately, he, I go to res here and have to reposition down, but I notice these people up here are on the same team of the people that I just killed. I got both of those thirsts, so gonna go ahead replayed up here reposition kind of keep moving keep my opponent guessing as to where i actually am now we're gonna go ahead and re-engage the fight unfortunately a few people go down here but we are able to get that kill ultimately now i'm gonna go ahead and push over we're gonna keep playing this early game for a while here it, it does keep going so now i'm gonna go ahead and push back over why ace goes down again we're gonna hit shots here Hit shots, he goes down, and that's the last bullet I have in that mag. So again, have to hit those shots in order to get that kill. Notice the people above on the minimap, and we're going to be paying attention to minimap a lot here. Again, still just kind of rotating, trying to use audio to my advantage. Sleek, unfortunately, goes down now, so I'm going to go ahead and get that kill. And I do want to get this thirst, at least as a team, so we get a sense of where people are. So now we're down to 29 bullets. Again, replayed up, not really taking much damage. I ended up, oh, there's the replay. The and now we're back in with my teammates. They keep landing roofs, so they keep rotating down. And this one gets tough. This is where I lose ammo. I don't have enough ammo here because of the floor loot and end up going down here. If I had more bullets, i probably kill that guy. But ultimately, uh, we are able to get that with Sleek finishing him off. I noticed this person down right here. So I just want to make sure that gets thirsted for one main reason. So we get the UAV. And what you'll notice in a second here is that when that person dies, we get... Let's talk about anticipation real quick because I want to show you how this works, how, what, how my mind works. I noticed this dot right here. Look at the way he's moving, right? Look at the way he's moving compared to the building. I know he's looping up that stairwell. He's pushing stairs, pushing stairs. So pushing stairs, pushing stairs. I get res. I'm going to replay. I have no ammo still, so I'm trying to make best with what I, can, what I have. I'm looking around. As you can see, all pistols here. No real floor loot guns. So I grab the MG82, and we got to push this as a team. So I'm going to get a few shots there. Four bullets left in the mag. I'm going to go ahead and break. Now I try to go ahead and melee him. Thankfully, my teammates are with me because I'm going to go down here. And that is a lot of the damage that I took this game uh, was that early game situation trying to really fight with no ammo here. So I'm going to go ahead. We do have enough for loadout, so we're finally going to get loadout here. And I want to point out a few things. First, I'm going to hit ammo crate because I need ammo in the worst way. I, I saw the guy fly in, so I don't know if we're going to have to fight this or not or if that person's going to back off. So I'm going to grab ammo just in case. Now, little IQ play here. In this scenario, since I know we're about to get loadout, I don't want to let my MG82 reload because it's a waste. I want to keep that 30 rounds that I have in in the pocket. So I'm not going to let this MG82 reload. I keep switching, which was stupid, but ultimately not going to let it reload. The other thing I want to point out is I know that pretty much we're all short on AR ammo at this point just because we've been asking for it and stuff. So strategically, you can go double AR sometimes, Craig M4, you know, using Craig FFAR. But in this scenario, I have to go AR SMG. 
which is of course common, but I do have some AR AR classes. So need to be going. In this case, I go QBZ Bison. Notice the QBZ, the AR ammo is, is pretty low. Pay attention to it here. So I have 60 in the mag, 30 in reserve, but my Bison, I'm full. So I'm good on the SMG and we're gonna go ahead and rotate over to our first kind of fight with Lodi. We have seven teams up, and I want to point out the teams, not the players, because, of course, people will respond. We have seven kills. So I noticed that person back there. I'm going to go ahead and challenge, do a quick heartbeat check, right? So I saw the person down low. I know this person's down low around the corner. Let's anticipate, be ready. Let's center our crosshairs so that we don't take damage. Center the crosshair, take a little bit, take a bullet, but he's downed. And ultimately thirsted. Now, I highlight this for my teammate. I know there's no immediate threat from that team. So I'm going to go ahead and ping exactly where that person is so that my teammates know. Instead of trying to calm out, you know, Nova 6, I can go ahead and ping exactly where it is. Now, I want to highlight a few different things with these fights upcoming. First things first, we're going to go ahead and push in here. Use the door. And I hear the person to the right. But notice those shots, he was getting shot from somebody else. So I'm going to immediately peek and then re-peek this and then go ahead and hip fire. I don't even worry about ADSing. I'm just going to hip fire that and ultimately get the kill. Now we use the UAV to our advantage. This person over here, let's go anticipate that person as we push. And I want to point out in this kill, the hip fire. I talk about hip fire a lot when we're talking about SMGs. Primarily how valuable it is with the Modern Warfare MP5 and of course how valuable it is as I showed in one of my TikToks recently with the bison because the bison hip fire is very good so notice this hip fire this person i break them because of the hip fire i've only taken half a plate of damage now when you notice and you see how close this ends up being now you see how much of a difference the hip fire makes right so it doesn't quite break me but gets me somewhat close they're down they're thirsty that's a team wipe there but without that hip fire it could have been a lot closer so now i'm going to go ahead and plate up unfortunately here uh, QBZ isn't the best. It is viable. If I have the Craig, I think I get a few downs with this scenario upcoming. So I notice they're down and I see that person flying in. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do much here with the QBZ. I just aren't, I'm not able to hit enough shots, but I do hear somebody below me. So I immediately refocus and I want you to pay attention to how the combat scout works to my advantage here. I'm going to go ahead and peek, then peek, repeat that. So I get a few shots. I'm broken. So I'm at a severe disadvantage. But I see this person through the wall. I pull back, right? Again, hip fire there. Get a few more bullets. They were not able to get any shot, any more shots on me yet. Now I continue to use the combat scout perk and ultimately aim down sight. I hit all my shots there. That's why I win that even when I'm at a disadvantage, right? So we talk about why my enemies don't shoot back. Okay, well, in that case, I did get shot, but I used... My movement, I use the combat scout perk, and I use my hip fire and my aim to my ability to ultimately win that even though I'm at a big disadvantage. Now, without a question, we start rolling down. I hear two teams fighting here. I see that guy right there. So I'm going to go ahead and be ready. Of course, centering because I'm anticipating him moving this way. I center that way, but quickly adjust. I go ahead and break. Get that down. He didn't really have much, so that was an easy kill. But ultimately, that's one where I don't take any damage because I'm ready for that person. I'm anticipating that person. So now we're going to go ahead and rotate in here. Now, I see that person on the roof. We get a great live ping. I think Dizzle's actually going to go kill somebody. Yeah, back there. Uh, Dizzle saw somebody, ends up stunning, get, getting the kill. I can't really help in this scenario. I'll hold that left side. Let's actually break this down real quick. I'll hold this left side of the truck just in case the person rotates out. But ultimately, I tell Dizzle, hey, this is on you. This is your kill right here in the sense of I'm not in a position to be able to help you. So you've got to do this on your own. Um, if the person does rotate left, then I have the advantage and we're kind of cross-firing and we have a good angle. But ultimately, Dizzle's able to get that down and get that thirst. Now I'm going to go ahead. And, I know there's still one on the roof, so I'm going to go ahead and play and try to push up there. This ends up backfiring. This person plays this extremely well, jumping down off roof to reposition. Talk about constantly keeping your opponent guessing. In this sense, they kept me guessing. They jumped off the roof. I didn't anticipate it. Um, it's not a play I would have expected this person to make. So uh, I end up going down there. That was really the only main death that I had. So uh, let's talk about something else here. I land back on loadout. You have to always be keeping in mind where people are dying, where you're killing people. And the reason is most people fly back in, they grab Lodi, and what happens is now they're 
their mind goes to, okay, I need ammo. Okay, I need plates. In this scenario, I know we killed a bunch of people over here. I'm going to go ahead and jump down here, easily grab ammo and plates. Now I don't have to worry about anything. Now I'm good to go, and I'm not thinking about, okay, where's ammo, where's plates? I already know where that stuff is. I'm right back in the fight. My mind is focused on who's in front of us. So I do want to highlight this person. I do think this person was AFK. Um, I don't know. They were just sitting in a corner, ended up not shooting. But Dizzle says there's somebody ghosted in here. So I'm, I am paying attention here. He gets shot there. Again, using Combat Scout perk to really track the re-challenge. You have to be very careful when not running cold-blooded because the live ping and the kind of quote-unquote wall hack really gives away the re-chow. So you have to be very careful when re -challing. Um now that thirst, that thirst is just to get the UAV. It's a huge benefit of rebirth. Um, so you don't want to overextend for a thirst, but that thirst is a huge, huge, huge advantage. Um, in that case, what you just saw, I shot at a smokestack, over aware, thought I saw somebody peeking, ended up re chow, bunny hopping and shooting, ended up not being anybody, anybody, but that's okay. We're perfectly okay in that scenario to over anticipate somebody as opposed to, you know, under anticipating and we get shot by that person. Now what you're going to see is there is a lot going on. I'm hearing a lot of audio cues. Of course, high, low audio isn't great um, versus left and right. Left and right, I hear very clearly. Audio has its moments depending on the building. So I'm just going to keep moving around this building. Unfortunately, we lose Sleek and Dizzle here. I'm trying to get a sense of where people are. Uh, don't rush to revive. You know, I'm a huge proponent of that. You know, at this point, it's it's around 48 to 50 seconds that they can survive without being, uh, as long as they're not taking any bullets or taking any damage. So around the halfway mark is 24 to 25 seconds. So I know I still have plenty of time to ace. I'm not going to rush here because what I don't want is to res and be so committed to the res that we end up getting pushed by somebody and I can't, we ultimately end up losing the game. So notice I stick in with the res, then I come off because I, I'm convinced I'm hearing people, they end up being above us, but I'm convinced that I'm hearing people pushing us. So I wanna kind of clear what's going on around us and you know handle that scenario before we revive. So now we're gonna go ahead and keep pushing. I'm gonna play this angle right here and try to get back into the building again. I know they're above me, so playing it strategically, we're gonna go ahead and be unpredictable here and really position in this way. Again, still a lot going on. I know we have two above or two straight ahead and one to the right, but there's no levels. I don't know if they're on the roof. I don't know if they're below us here. So again, just still trying to clear what's going on. Now I hear this person right here and notice the centering, right? I'm centering up the stairs. The centering actually could have been better there, uh, but ultimately I'm able to turn. I hit my shots there before they can really do too much damage. We get the thirst and there's actually one right on my level the same uh, basically behind me. So I'm going to go ahead and reposition all the way down here so that I can plate up and ultimately reposition, get back in the fight. But I do let Ace know, hey, I'm not with you. I'm not with you. So that Ace is aware, hey, he either needs to get the down and the thirst or he needs to pull back and reposition and kind of disengage. Now, this person I hear running in, ultimately ready to shoot, ready to fight. And you can see here what happens when you lack anticipation is exactly what happens with this kill this person's just running they're not anticipating anybody they're not really paying attention to what's going on around them i get an easy kill don't take any damage there so that's a pretty easy one notice we have 16 kills three teams six people respawns disabled but again people can still respawn if their respawn timer is starting to count before it disables they can still come back in so just have to be aware of that and i point that out because it almost actually costs us in this game so again, I know there were two above us on the roof. I don't know why they end up jumping here. We don't really have zone. And what happens is what I'm nervous about is having to push across while they still hold us in zone. They could have gas masks. They could be playing the rooftop with gas and really shoot down on us because we're not in a really good spot. Instead, they end up jumping. And I want you to notice how Ace and I perfectly handle this situation. And I'm going to try to pause it at a really good spot. One jump, one jump. So one jump, one jump. There's the second one. You can see the second one here. You can see the foot. And I know there's one back here. Ace is going to handle the crossfire of this guy right here while I go ahead and challenge this guy. And it works out perfect. There's Ace. Now I'm going to challenge this guy. And it works out perfect. We get both both thirsts. Now I see one up here on minimap. So I'm going to go ahead and push all the way around. Unfortunately, Ace gets caught. Ace ends up going down here. 
Now, I'm going to go ahead and play this building, right? I have a little pocket here. It is 2v1v1. So I'm going to play this little pocket. I'm not going to overpeak. At this point, I'm just going to see where circle rotates. Now, as soon as circle rotates, I don't have a gas mask. Playing up to the right side is going to be very tough. So my only real play here is to play the left side and play it early because I want to get to try to get to one of these buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and play this early. I'm, I'm peeking this side because I know there's people over here. I know there's at least one over there from where Ace died. Playing this building, I ultimately hear this guy in this building. Go ahead and shoot. He had no plates, so that's a pretty easy kill right there. I don't take any damage. Run through gas. Too fast. Too fast. Too fast. To actually take any damage there. Now, I hear them fighting over this way. What's perfect about this building that I'm in is I'm sitting in this window sill right here. Ultimately, I'm still in zone. These people have to rotate over. They can't rotate into a building. They have to rotate out in the open here. So I'm just going to hold. Not going to get greedy for the 20 bomb. Let's go ahead and take the dub, right? 19 and a win. I'll take it. So I'm just going to kind of wait here. Ultimately, what you're going to see is this person is rotating late. They're in gas. Super easy kill for the 19 kill win. So I hope this helps in terms of you understanding how I can take a very good lobby Play a strategic way, use my anticipation, use my movement, use my aim to ultimately not take a lot of damage, drop 19 kills and the win, 5,400 damage. So as I always say, let's get better today and I will see you tomorrow.